Alright, hello and welcome everyone to another night of SIVO Season 3 Placement Matches once again in the group stages here. The group with Nixus Gaming and Swag, as well as Rare Candy, the top three right now. Looks like Swag probably going to win the group this match for second place. A best of three between Nexus Gaming and Rare Candy. I'm Helium from twitch.tv slash FMBP Dota. So if you're watching a game or watching on stream, make sure to follow for all your SIVO and NEL action. Some great NA Dota as we get into the bans. We've got Ice here for Rare Candy. He will ban out the Wisp as well as the Weaver. So... Still a little scared of the Wisp, doesn't want to play it. A lot of times that hero gets through. And he goes for the very aggressive Visage pickup. Uh, very strong support. That Soul Assumption nuke cannot be underrated. Now, Nexus Gaming, they ban out the Clockwork, which is a little interesting. He is a strong offlaner. Maybe one of the Tier 1s, as well as Batrider. And they pick up another Tier 1 offlaner in the Nature's Prophet. So look for that to probably go into the offlane. If it's a little too dangerous, head into the jungle, get some items. And of course... Become a core later on into the game with split pushing, uh, Shadow Blade, Desolator. We'll see what he decides to go for. It has an interesting pick. Definitely a good hero. Easy to gank, however, in the mid lane. Skywrath Mage. And we'll see if that's just going to support or a mid. It's a pretty ambiguous pick, so you don't really know uh, what to do against it. And of course, that silence is very great. Three second silence at level one off of, uh, I don't even know what that's called actually, Ancient Seal. So it goes three, four, five, and six seconds at level four. It's an extremely long stun. Can really shut down heroes like Weaver, like Puck, like Storm, basically, or Timbersaw, anyone that can get away. And of course, let's not forget Mystic Flare. Ridiculous amounts of damage if you find someone alone. Ice goes for the Nyx Assassin. Strong support, a multiple stun impale, if you're good at using it, of course. Mana Burn is going to be really, really great against Skywrath Mage. That's going to obliterate Skywrath, actually. He's got an insanely high mana pool and base intelligence, as well as int growth. So, Mana Burn, watch out for it. Skywrath is definitely going to take a beating from it. Um, and that's not good when one support can kill a carry or a support with uh, use of Mana Burn just a couple times. It's not too expensive, and the cooldown is only 4 seconds there at level 4. Maybe one of those games where we actually level that up first. Or second, at least. Probably always one Impale. Uh, but anyway, to catch up, we've got Alchemist, Naga banned out there, so a really strong carry. And of course, a tier 1 support. And then on the other side, we've got Terramis drafting tonight for Nexus Gaming. He's going to take out Gyrocopter as well as the Nakes. So very strong carries there. Carries that they think will do well against the Phantom Lancer, as that is who they have scooped up here. And I don't believe Rare Candy's picked it up yet, but Naga Siren recently added back to Captain's Mode. Very good against the PL. If you're wondering why, the Stone Gaze does, I believe, 2,000 damage to Illusions once you activate it. So, pretty much until the late, late game, you immediately get rid of all Phantom Lancer Illusions. You can isolate the Phantom Lancer. Uh, makes them easy to kill. However, Phantom Lancer going to hit his stride a little earlier than the Naga Siren. So, we'll see what they decide to go for here. The third pick. And they pick last. So, obviously, going to save the mid. Maybe not obviously, but maybe, usually, going to save the mid for the last pick. Because Nexus will reveal their entire lineup before they have to pick their last hero. So Rare Candy does have that advantage going into this game tonight with the first pick. It's funny how it's really the the last pick that gives you the advantage, in my opinion. Um, but, whatever. Still waiting here on the third pick. They've got their two supports. Nyx could go mid. Should probably go mid if it's Skyrath. Um, he maybe will do okay. I'm not actually sure. The mana drain's gonna be good, but Arcane Bolt is still quite annoying. Looks like they will pick up their offlaner, so they go with the Bounty Hunter. A very good hero. Um, can actually do really well against Nature's Prophet in a 1v1 lane. And of course, if Nature's Prophet jungles, Bounty Hunter is gonna be all over him and make his life miserable as Nexus Gaming... About to make this game boring here, picking up Nature's Prophet, Phantom Lancer, and Keeper of the Light. So playing some very Rat Dota style, perhaps a little bit of Alliance style as well. So look for maybe some late game split pushing uh, coming out here from Nexus. The recall from Caudal with PL is going to be a great combination for split push. And of course, Nature's Ten Prophet's Teleport. Remaining. So definitely going to be a hard game for Rare Candy. Uh, they need to definitely get ahead early. Try to shut down this PL. 
Uh, but it's no easy task going aggressive into a Phantom Lancer as well as a Coddle. Now the fourth pick for Rare Candy will be coming out here. Ten seconds remaining. For anyone just joining, this is a best of three. Game one here between Naxxus Gaming and Rare Candy, who apparently don't have a team because they never seem to tag up. Uh, their fourth pick, though, they will go with the Shadow Fiend. Pretty popular mid as of late. It definitely was years ago as well, um, but I'm not actually sure what kept him out of the mid lane. Was he nerfed or was it just because he's easily ganked? Um, especially, actually, it was just changes within Dota 2 itself. The time between his raises were a lot longer than they were in Dota 1, and I think that's why he pretty much stopped getting picked up. And some heroes were absent, which let other heroes get popular, like Pudge very early on in Dota 2. Um, still see him occasionally, but now Shadow Fiend, they fixed those raise animations, and he's kind of back. And of course, the buff recently with the Requiem of Souls, uh, releasing half and doing the damage of half of an ultimate upon death. Uh, very nice buff. Still easily ganked, but one of the hardest snowballing heroes and fastest flash farmers in the game, as we've got a Rubik banned out by Rare Candy. Nexus takes out a mid once, no, not once again, I guess pretty much their first actual mid ban guaranteed mid ban, uh, the Queen of Pain, and it looks like they didn't want to go Tinker versus Quap, as Tinker looks to be their mid hero here. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I would say they better hurry up. They go with the Invoker, so that could be a Shadowfiend tri-lane. Invoker maybe going to head into the middle lane. Uh, Bounty Hunter, I guess, as a result, will be solo safe. We'll see what they decide to do, though, as we get into the game. Nexus Gaming, their lineup, a little more obvious where it's going to go. It looks like it will be a Skywrath PL Coddle tri-lane. Tinker into the mid lane and Nature's Prophet off. If I could find my hotkey. There we go. Overlays all squared away. So we get into the game. Game 1. Rare Candy versus you Nexus really Gaming. I believe they're second and third. Rare Candy in second. Nexus in third. So the winner tonight. I think this is either the last match in the group stages. Or maybe one more after this. So an important match to try and get that second place slot. And advance into the playoff brackets. But let's introduce the teams. We've got Ice here. Going to be playing the Bounty Hunter. Jester, meanwhile, going to be on this Invoker. And will be heading into the mid lane as we see Outshine on the Shadow Fiend going top with Ring of Protection, Tangos, and a Salve, as expected. Two branches as well. Normally, you do just see the Wraith Band and some branches. Gets pulled some support get pulled some regen by your support and able to last it a little better but in this lane may not need it they actually go defensive with this one and backing the shadow fiend up will be pillow pants on the visage here and last but not least we've got super dry on the nyx assassin with sentry wards clarity and a healing salve tango so definitely buying the support items there don't want the camp to be blocked and the one who would be doing that would be jiggy fresh on the nature's prophet off lane right now with sort of a jungle build though, clarity, two clarities as well as a glove of haste. This is normally more for just sitting in the jungle, so we'll see if he just sits up here um, to get XP off of maybe one wave, to get level two, heads to the jungle with the TP, and then just pretty much comes top, checks on the top tower when he can get XP and when he needs to defend it. Uh, otherwise, expect him to just bop and weave between the lane and the jungle. Mid lane, we've got Caillou here on the Tinker. Very solid Tinker player going for two Mantles of Intelligence, so it looks like he will be doing a dual Null Talisman build. Uh, some Branches, Tangos, and was given the wards actually uh, by the defensive Trilane. And that's going to be Rakudo on the Caudal, Fallen here on the Skywrath Mage, and Teramis last but not least. Quelling Blade in his inventory here to last it a little better under the tower as supports pull. So yeah, he's going to be handling the PL, looking to carry hard this game as Ice, uh, maybe looking around right now for that Nature's Prophet, but he's going to be top. He's doing well with the Treants here. 
You gonna pull the wave back? Just camp it there, it's fine if the Treant dies in this situation because it gives XP to no one. Creep, don't need gold. And yeah, it really delays the lane. Uh, it can actually run it around a lot more than that to buy some time. Uh, so you get two waves at once and therefore gonna push to your tower. Uh, but meanwhile, we see Super Dry here on the Nyx for the Dire will be dewarding one of the wards that Caillou put down. And wards up the Ancients as well, so they really want to keep track on this Tinker, see if he's going to be stacking up the Ancients at any time in this game. Because he may not do well in the lane, um, and if he doesn't, can really catch up by doing the Ancient stacks, and they're going to be aware if that's happening. But he hasn't decided to do it yet, still sitting in the lane as CS right now. He's got three, compare that to Invoker, seven and three. He went Exhort here with the Null Talisman build straight up, so actually hitting for quite a lot as he hits level three now. Invoker with uh, about 74 damage, that's actually quite a bit. Um, Tinker may have a hard time in that lane. Goes to sack the Ancients now, so they're going to be aware. Does he actually? Okay, yeah, we'll use that from the, the ground, so definitely knows what he's doing there. Uh, it's going to hit the Ancients, that should sack it. Maybe you want to do it a little one second earlier than he did. As Teramis, Bounty Hunter, comes into the lane, looking to get some XP. Doesn't receive any yet, about 0 of 200 there on level 1. Teramis, meanwhile, about to hit level 3. And it's really, lane control is the name of the game when you're going versus a Bounty Hunter. You do not want to give him that level 2, level 3, because then he can start to harass your carry when you leave him with the Janata damage, as well as the bonus damage from Shadow Walk. And we'll see what happens here. It's actually working out for Nature's Prophet that he's in the off lane, and he's getting a little bit here as well. No last hits, but picking up some XP, being pretty annoying with his Treants, but it looks like they maybe pulled the wave into the neutrals. Uh, Pillow Pants here, gonna be controlling the pulls right now for the Dire, soaking up that XP, wants to get a level 6, um, but they really should maybe switch those rolls around. Visage, 6 is great, of course, um, but of course Nyx wants that 6 for Vendetta, he's sort of the key right now, as well as the Bounty Hunter here, who is yet to hit level 2, to shutting down the PL, ganking him very heavily with track, Vendetta, and Impales early on, as Ice here going to continue to block these pulls, just make sure the supports can't be as effective as they want to, and Ice just being really annoying around the mid lane right now, trying to jungle up as well, steal Coddle's uh, abilities, er, not abilities, <laughs> steal his creep of course. Rakuto, very conscious with that sentry ward, <clears throat> doesn't go and block his own camp. The dust goes off though, Ice is in a lot of trouble, will fall, Caillou going to pick up the first blood here, so Caillou drawing the first blood here at 3 minutes, 25 seconds. He's only got 7 last hits compared to the 18 that the invoker has picked up in his lane, but he grabs the first blood and with that, only 150 gold behind his mid opponent right now and that's Jester on the invoker doing very nicely even picked up tranquil boots which is an interesting pick for invoker normally you just see the phase with the exhort built it leaves you a little squishy but with the regen available from quas it's still quite strong and he's got three points in exhort right now hits 490 at the moment sunstrike gonna be doing a little bit of damage actually 225 right now so if they find anyone low uh, they definitely can use it but not really able to get anyone low at all. Ice can't, can't harass anyone in the bot lane. Takes a bit of damage himself. And then meanwhile up top. Uh, possibly just use it on Jiggy Fresh. If you see him sprout, Invoker knows he's in there. And it's pretty much a free shot. Shooting fish in a barrel pretty much there. Uh, if he is low enough. Demised. And now the supports. They will smoke. Super dry still level 1. Pillow pants though up to level 3. Um, if I were them, I'd like this situation reversed. I don't know where that Sunstrike went. It actually did just go in the mid lane. On to Caillou now, as it looks like a gank. They want to get the scoreboard notched up here. Take down Caillou as well. The supports roll in. Super Dry with the Impale to land. Grave Chill as well. Do they have the damage they need? They should have waited on that Invoke. A little bit of miscommunication there. Invoke now coming off a of cooldown. Did not have Chilling Touch. And the supports, once again, they rotate. They waste a ton of time. And Super Dry now, still level 1. Ice, however, up to level 2, will take an Illuminate as well as the Spirit Lance. So a lot of harass in that lane for the Bounty Hunter. Uh, looks like it maybe will drive him back here. Uh, but getting some levels, he's up to level 2 at 5 minutes. Not a whole lot. The lane control from Teramis has been very good here. Just keeping it in this vicinity about the entire time. So well done there. And now, let's check out the levels. Uh, Outshine, level 6 right now on the Shadow Fiend. So, gonna pick up those treads. 
last hit pretty early. We'll see if he gets a bass, uh, but right now, leading in the last hits is, yep, Outshine on the Shadow Fiend at 39. Meanwhile, we got the PL, 38 and 15. A Jiggy Fresh comes back into the lane. Actually, the hero's levels that I wanted to check was Nature's Prophet. He's level three and a half, so doing a little better than uh, the Bounty Hunter we see at just two and a half. And Jiggy Fresh now, with those Gloves of Haste, still going for a very fast Midas build. He's level three with five last hits, so not getting much himself, but a little more here uh, than Ice, who's taken a death, no last hits, and only level two. With a bit of harass there, we can see even one level in Janata does a lot here to the Coddle being played by Rakuto. Uh, now, we're just going to hug his tower. We've got three down here, two supports trying to get work done in the bot lane. They really want to kill. They want to pressure the PL, but I'm just really concerned about this Nyx Assassin. He's going to go for some pressure now, but he could get so much more if he just got a fast level 6. PL, very squishy for a while into this game, but uh, not often to go for it. See how the mid lane is squaring up, and check this out. There are some stacks going on, so Caillou stacking the Ancients very well there. Uh, he's got Boots 1 right now. Looks like he may be rushing the Travel. We'll see if he picks up a Soul Ring. Uh, probably not, since he does have the Bottle, so... Probably going to go Boots of Travel first, uh, then into the Soul Ring. Just give you the Global Presence a little early. Let you get in on the ganks. Uh, maybe pick up a kill or two. Or just go to a lane, push it out, and then a bottle up, go back to base, and rinse and repeat until you can get that Soul Ring. Because it's definitely a necessary item. Provides so much extra mana uh, because of the way it interacts with Rearm. So we'll see what he does there. And of course, only a thousand away now, so it will be a very nice time Boots of Travel, especially after cleaning up the Ancient stack, but as I say that, the supports from Rare Candy don't want to let this happen. Super Dry, as well as Pillow Pants here, uh, looking to block it and or ward it up, as we see Outshine getting the first tower of the game. Something's delivered. It's a Bass, Treads, and an Ogre Club he's got on him now, so it looks like he will be rushing BKB. As in the mid lane, we got Jester here, does go Tranquils, does finish a Null Talisman, and now with a 7 minute and 50 second completed Midas. Uh, but gonna get it a little later as the Courier was all the way out delivering things to Outshine. So Jester gonna have like an 8 minute 30 second uh, Midas as the ward control has been really nice here for the Dire. That's the second or third ward they've dewarded on those runes. But Caillou okay with that, doesn't really, really want to roam around, just needs to get those boots of travel up and continue to stack the Ancients as they are blocked right now here by that ward. Uh, which is a really nice ward because it gives vision of the rune as well, I believe. But Jiggy Fresh though could be in trouble, raises may land, here comes the Sunstrike raise, it's enough, Jester picks up his first kill of the game. And that's what I was talking about earlier, every time you sprout. The raises are there, and then of course, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel as Invoker connects with the Sunstreak, getting himself on the board. He's 54, 24, and then he's 1, 0, and 0. We check out his net worth. He is in second place right now, right behind his teammate, the Shadow Fiend. We see Taramis in the bot lane at 3,700 net worth, and then Caillou in the mid at about 2.9k, so still pretty close. Tinker a little off of those three, uh, but the top three net worth, close. Two of them for rare candy. And Spangler, happy not to miss the Invoker game. He hasn't done a lot yet. A bit of miscommunication early with the supports. Didn't have Invoke on cooldown to get the Cold Snap. Missed a kill opportunity on Caillou. Uh, they could have just been a little more patient with it as they knew they dewarded. And then finally picks one up with the Sunstrike, which is now doing 287.5 uh, damage. So pretty strong. As Terramis, though, will pick up the Bounty Hunter in the bot lane. And here comes the Sunstrike. Is it going to land? It does, but it looks like it splits damage with those two creep. That's uh, going to allow Terramis to live. May have actually missed as well. Looks like he's getting pretty close to the Diffusal. Pretty much has it, and that's a really fast timing right there. Diffusal, the item that is generally considered the more battle-ready PL. Uh, if you want to farm up extra hard, you get that Yasha first, get up some more armor and attack speed. And with that, as well since he started with a Quelling Blade, you can pretty much jungle really fast, especially if you're maxing the Juxtapose, uh, Phantom Edge, of course, and Spirit Lance can really jungle fast and then get a Diffusal Blade, but maybe looking to fight uh, pretty early on in the game, picking up the Diffusal first. Rakuto gonna snatch that rune away. The double damage, a good rune for Jester as well as Outshine to pick up, but it looks like Outshine with the two supports busy pushing over 
onto that top tier 2 tower. The Sunstrike, though, from Jester to connect Ice there with the Janatas as well as the Shuriken Tosses to keep Rikudo going pretty slow. As he did have the double damage, but turning around wouldn't have done him any good. The push continues. They got a Siege Engine here. I believe the third one of the game. Pillow Pants could be in tr Oh, what did he even get slowed by? Oh, the Concussive Shot. Let's see what Skyrath's build order is. Yeah, I'd probably say that's the right one. If you're not really getting any items, getting more points in Arcane Bolt doesn't really matter too much. So just going to max out that Silence. Will be really good uh, for canceling Outshine if he's channeling his ultimate up. Uh, or if he can land some really good raises, make sure to cancel him. And Invoker even, pretty good. Can't Ghost Walk out of it, so it makes ganking him a little easier. They haven't tried to do it yet at all. They've really actually been in the bot lane concentrating on getting levels. So I'm curious to check out the XP graph. The Dire are actually ahead by a slight margin. Maybe due to the Midas here. Um, and the Gold, about 2... Thousand, a little over 2,000 advantage right now as Pillow Pants could be in trouble. Will Smoke to try to dodge this projectile, but it doesn't actually work. Either wrong timing or it doesn't function that way uh, off the Arcane Bolt. But uh, maybe a bit of a waste of that smoke. We'll get back to base faster to go ahead and heal up there. As it's 2-2, approaching that 12-minute mark right now. And we see Storms coming, aka Fallen, here at level 5 with... The supports Coddle and Visage also at 5. Bounty Hunter has actually got 6 at 12 minutes, so not too bad actually considering he was level 1 at around 5 or 6 minutes. And now Nyx Assassin though, paying the price for roaming early and having them be unsuccessful. He's at level 3 and that's really going to hurt the Dire here. He needs to be about 6 at this point with Bounty Hunter and they just need to constantly be ganking Terramis on the PL. But it's not happening and it's not going to happen. Uh, so it could be hard looking to go into the late game without too much conflict here on the PL. And even the Nature's Prophet has his Midas up as well. And now starting to jungle up level 6. Nature's Wrath, Wrath of Nature is online. So it makes their team fight a little bit stronger. And of course if you just spam it, we'll keep the lanes pushed for you. But really just waiting on Super Dry here to hit level 6. Outshine, 95 CS, 13 minutes. Looks like they've been stacking out the jungle effectively for him. Uh, maybe really sacrificing this Nyx. I think I would have rather sacrificed the Visage here, but let's check out Ice. Going to be chasing Caillou. Can they get him? The silence goes out. He can't go invis. Running through the march, he will go down. So Skyrath with that five second silence right now. Uh, doing work. But yeah, should have probably sacrificed the Visage's levels. Uh, he's only level 5, now Super Dry at 4, but it looks like they're really sacrificing here, stacking the camps for Shadowfiend as Jester picks up a kill there with what looks to be a Deafening Blast Cold Snap combination. So one point in Wex is online at the moment uh, for Jester. Going to open up the door to a lot more abilities. Sorry, I just noticed that Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. The bottom tower gonna get denied by Jester, so he's there at the right time. He's got four points in Quas, four in Exhort, and then picking up the first Wax. I'd say that's a the pretty standard uh, Invoker build right there in terms of uh, skill points being used. The Wax just allows you to get that uh, Ghost Walk, which is really nice, even Alacrity, uh, which is pretty sweet as well. But the most notable spells coming from the uh, Quas Exhort. Definitely going to be the Sunstrike, uh, the Forge Spirits, Cold Snap, and actually the Ice Wall is pretty dang legit. But now Terramis getting focused. Ice takes a lot of damage from that. Will actually live. Jester now dominating. Uh, actually does take down the Phantom Lance. So I'm not sure with what. Maybe the Forge Spirit. Long auto attack following. Uh, as Rakuto now getting chased down is tracked up. Ice managed to live through that. Actually healed up. Maybe had a salve. I think he used his bottle charges. As he's still hanging around the bot tower. Meanwhile, Outshine on the top lane. Still farming up his storm. 14 minutes, 52 seconds. He's got 121 last hits. 57 denies right now. BKB online as well. So he's ready to fight. Probably go for Shadow Blade next. Maybe that Blink Dagger. He could just be saving up for that. You don't usually need uh, both of those items. The Shadow Blade or the Blink, generally. Uh, we'll see what he goes for, though. Blink's maybe a little more fun. Ice. Uh, yeah, gotta watch out for that tower aggro. It's pretty far. It would Super dry. It looks like they gave him the mid lane now to hit level 6. He's about level 5. Soon to be level 6. And then with that Vendetta, 
they know Teramis here is just going to be sitting inside of their jungle so they can gank him up a lot. Meanwhile, though, deny by Jiggy Fresh onto the bot tier 2 tower. Uh, so one deny there by Jester earlier on the bottom one for the Dire, the top tier 2. For the rating gets tonight as well, so still pretty even in the tower so far. Two gone for the Radiant, the one at the bot lane gone for the Dire. The score, three to four, 16 minutes into this game, but we see Shadowfiend farming up a storm. However, Invoker, with four kills, 100 CS, and this Midas, is going to be ahead in the net worth ever so slightly, around 7.8k. Shadowfiend at 7.4, and then PL Fallen actually pretty far behind now at 5.9, uh, but he should have the... Yeah, does have it, actually. Now, looks like he's going back for the Yasha into the Manta. Heart, probably going to be the item after that. Possibly the Butterfly. But there's a lot of magic damage right now on the side of Rare Candy. Of course, Shadowfiend, though, heading for about 170. And looking to get yet another tower now. They go bot, working on this Tier 1. The Forge Spirits, as well as Invoker, and Shadowfiend doing work. All their supports, as well as their offlaner, are around here ready to gank anyone who steps here into this lane as the tower will go ahead and drop tp goes to back up top by super dry he's level six but of course the march of the machines at level four doing way too much damage for him as invoker four staff blink dagger so going a uh, full momentum here actually picks up mana boots which is a little interesting and the pings come out to defend the top tier one they don't want to lose any towers if they don't have to right now Teramis slowly but surely losing map control as a team. I'd still say they probably have the late game, but uh, might need to actually uh, take an engagement here, maybe win a fight. They've got the Diffusal Blade up. It looks like Teramis did use a charge of it. Uh, not sure when or what that was used on. Uh, maybe when they killed Ice. He's got three deaths on him right now. Two assists, so some of those are probably going to be track kills. I hear him again. Nope, just nodding up the creep there. Jester still in the mid lane with that mobility. Will go forward. Throws out the Tornado Deafening Blast Meteor combo right onto Record Rakuto. Four steps forward as well. Takes him out. Jester clearly knows how to play this hero. So look for him to maybe pick up uh, an Aghanim Scepter next just to get those invokes on a shorter cooldown. Uh, if you are familiar with Invoker, very familiar with his abilities, make sure to pick up the Ag Scepter. Uh, makes it a lot more fun. feel like you're playing StarCraft for a little while. Uh, if you're just learning Invoker, maybe... Go for the Ools, maybe go for the Force Staff. Go for those easier combinations that require you to invoke a little less. And then uh, work your way up to getting the Ags. Very fun item. Uh, definitely very, very useful. As it's now 5-3. to three. The gold advantage for the Dire getting kind of out of control. 5,000 advantage right now. XP about 2,000. And Rare Candy impressing me in tonight's game. Nexus used to be a very, very solid team. Now with a couple new players they haven't played in a while. They looked very rusty versus Swag. And uh, they're being tested here tonight. Just, and they do have the weaker earlier game lineup here. But let's see what Invoker can do. That Meteor doing work with Exort almost max right now. That's a track kill. Ice will go down. Outshine going to fall as well. But not before he dies. His death will kill Skyrath because of the change to Requiem of Souls. Buyback here on the Invoker. Both cores go down. They dive at tier 1. And they were doing so well. And now, questionable play there. Diving past the tier 1. They lose both their cores. Their bounty hunter does for a track kill. And they clean up two supports. Uh, I'd have to say, not worth it. And right when I was complimenting them, they make some uh, very questionable plays. The XP lead all but gone. Gold now turning around. And bounty hunter getting some items. Picks up the phase boots. Pillow Pants loaded with the wards, making that mech. There is the Blink Dagger right now on Shadowfane. It looks like he sort of just ran through the tower, taking like five tower hits before he got into the battle. Definitely a mistake there. They needed to wait for the creep wave, uh, just because that Meteor from Jester was so good. He got a little kill happy, kind of baited his team in there. So if they just cool their jets and continue to take it slow, you can really not afford to let Terramis start picking up kills or to let Jiggy Fresh start picking up a lot of kills. Uh, they're doing a good job keeping them at bay. Right now they're... Fourth and fifth in the net worth, so it's working out for him. Teramis, though, maybe will go down here, track out. Ice to drop. Nice. Coddle Blast by Rakuto to clean it up. Ice goes down. There are sentries everywhere. They don't have a gem yet, uh, but the sentries are paying off. They will see Super Dry as well. They throw out the Mana Leak now at what level is that? Just at level one, so not going to lose a ton of mana. Mana Boots as well up on Super Dry. No, Invoker has Mana Boots, interestingly enough. And there's the blink. 
Soul Ring, Travel on Tinker. Pretty much the classic build there uh, as of late. So the Boots of Travel, of course, to get to the lanes. Exploit the Rearm ability. If you don't get Boots of Travel on Tinker, you are wrong. Um, Soul Ring as well just works. Uh, basically, it makes his effective mana pool very high because of its refresh width. Rearm. And then, of course, the Blink Dagger. So what you would do in this case, you'd TP here throw out a march and then blink over into the trees able to push the lane out pretty much from safety a couple heroes will be rather bothersome with that uh, notably the spirit breaker um anyone with a blink basically that can find you bounty hunter as well can just wait for you to come in uh which they do have that hero so we'll see if ice can get his act together dying quite a few times here as super dry eats a mystic flare to the face looks like teramis just needs to throw he can't find it there's still the sentry there he will clean up the kill actually but on the back side of this outshine looks like he takes out rakuto tinker meanwhile will get the bounty hunter teramis gonna try to run away but the rockets go back out blink away from the shadow fiend blink away from the jester as well middle tower is under attack i have no reason to lie about such things what was the Requiem of Souls change? Uh, see, Dark Side asking about it was the fact, like it builds up to 36 souls, and when you died, you used to you lose half of them, and you would respawn with 18, and that was it. But now, when you die, you actually release the souls, so they do damage. They do half of the ultimate damage when you die. Uh, so basically, in death, he actually does a little more damage. Can pick up kills from the afterlife. When before he just died and respawned with 18. But now, it makes more sense, I think, uh, for that to happen that way. As it's 9 to 8, Rakuto farming up here at the neutrals. Looking to get that mech. No mech for either team yet. Um, let's see, the mechanism is a little closer right now for Pillow Pants, but still not that much closer. As Teramis here, he's got the Yasha, the Orb, Ultimate Orb. And the Diffusal Blade. So pretty close to the Mansa Diffusal combo right there. Some big items. Caillou, meanwhile, another 1700 gold. He's got Boots of Travel, Blink Dagger, and a Soul Ring. Rakuto, we mentioned, working towards the mechs. Storm's Coming, aka Fallen. Not a whole lot. And we already checked out Terramis. Outshine did go for the Blink Dagger. Has about another 3k. So maybe uh, waiting to see what the next item from Terramis is going to be. If it's a Butterfly. Uh, probably go straight for the MKB. Otherwise, gonna pick up the Daedalus just for a little bit more damage there. As Super Dry in the top lane. He's got an urn, got dust and boots as well. Not a whole lot for him right now. Ice, phase boots, dust, and a bottle. So we'll see if he picks up a Vlad's or maybe a Desolator as Terramis could be in a lot of trouble here. They will take him down. No! There's no dust. Now he actually will drop um, once again. I think the burn damage from the Meteor or maybe just an auto attack I missed. But he goes down, actually, and now the Fortify is popped, the creep, however, were they around? Let's check, yeah, they must have been around, because backdoor protection is off. Yeah, they pulled the wave actually behind the tower, and uh, they're going to get it, Outshine will take some damage here, no, backdoor protection kicks back in, but here comes the creep wave, uh, those actually don't do any damage to towers, uh, once they've used all their charges, the familiars that is, meanwhile, Super Dry defending the top, that looks to be the push coming in from Jiggy Fresh, we find him now in the mid lane, they're looking to get the tier 1 tower here, but there's a wraparound on the backside. Ice comes in, gets critted off the Shadow Blade. Or the, actually, just the 150 damage on the Shadow Blade. Sentry dropped, and they're going to clean him up. Rakuto, nice Illuminate there off the Coddle Blade. Here comes everyone else on the backside. Pillow Pants throws out. Is there anything else? Can they get him? No, I don't know where the Deafening Blast was or the Tornado. Nothing should have been on cooldown. Thought he maybe had the burst. Now Deafening Blast invoked, so maybe a little slip up there by Jester. Caillou. Able to blink away to safety and TP out of this. And let's see, tower is in deny range, so they're going to get the deny. Second tower of the game denied right now for the Dire. And Caillou just looking to clean up the jungle here with his uh, march. Looks like he missed the trolls there. He could have just attacked them to pull them into it, but uh, looks like he'll clean them all up anyways. And just head back to base. With a push coming in on the mid lane, Super Dry will throw out the Vendetta. It's 9 to 10. The Gold Graph still in favor of the Dire XP, though, after that dive. 4,000 advantage for the Radiant right now. Pillow Pants is discovered a little far out. Tinker's burst damage is still quite high, but luckily for Pillow Pants, he doesn't have a lot of mana. Was just finishing up spamming those rockets. And Pillow Pants may go down. Jiggy Fresh onto the high cliff. We'll use the Sprout on him. And the Mystic Flare is going to clean it up. Meanwhile, 
Ice trying to go to town, trying to clean up Rakuto. The alt goes out. There's a blinding light as well. And Ice will take the fall, make it 12-9 for Nexus Gaming right now. Outshine continues to farm, but we haven't really seen a big impact uh, yet. The only fight he really got involved in was the one where they lost their advantage, diving past the tier 1 in the mid lane. Uh, but we see him at 201 CS, 12.3k net worth, BKB, Blink Dagger, and looks like he is going for the butterfly, actually. Uh, not the most often seen build, um, normally. You'll just go for that Daedalus, uh, maybe even an Eth Blade if you want to go that route. And the MKB, as I would assume the Terramis here will eventually be building into a butterfly, but maybe he'll just be going uh, into the heart, is what I'm trying to say. Probably will just build into the heart to tank up against the raises, of course. And the butterfly will maybe help out Shine go 1v1 versus the PL because of all the illusions, but uh, with the mana burn, the damage is going to be a lot, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if it counts. I think maybe a Satanic would have pretty, been a pretty good next item as well. Uh, or even Butterfly Satanic if he can continue uh, to farm up uh, quickly. As Rice continuing to throw out tracks. Do I have a game I'm doing tomorrow? Uh, for Sivo, I don't believe so. I do NEL every night as Ice falls down there to the Phantom Lancer. So Terram is picking up another kill. He's actually going to be 4, 2, and 1 right now. Uh, but yeah. I could probably do another Sivo game tomorrow if someone's playing. Let me know. Um, I believe tomorrow's Tuesday. So I always like to do one Sivo game a night and then head into NEL later on after Mount finishes up. So if you're watching here and want to see some great NA Dota action, make sure to follow twitch.tv slash fmbpdota. It would mean a lot. I've been growing a lot recently since doing any else. A lot of fun that you probably don't want to miss out on, uh, but may have to stay up late for. And of course, to talk more about Sivo, these are just the placement matches for Season 3. This is if you want to get into main and join the top 16 teams from Season 2. So a little higher caliber of play. If that's not for you, don't worry. You don't need to go through the placements to sign up for Open. The registration will be ending on October 17th for that. So make sure to get involved to head over to Sivo.com and check out the events for Dota 2, Counter-Strike 1.6 because it's better, uh, CSGO, CS Source, Shoot Mania, and a couple other games, Battlefield 3 as well. Should be a lot of fun and hopefully you guys get involved. I believe $5,000 in cash prizes between some of the bigger titles. 1.5k in Dota 2, so make sure to check that out. If you're in the chat, I'm sure Spangler can type something as well, or link you. As he must be watching, because Invoker here, 6, 1, and 1, so maybe make him happy. We saw Jester have a bit of an invoking mishap, let uh, Nature's Prophet TP out when he really shouldn't have. We see now that he's got the Ag, so really those evokes, pretty much no cooldown, only 4 seconds right now, can really spam the abilities as the butterfly actually finished already at 28 minutes. So Outshine coming along really nicely as we miss a kill in the mid top lane actually. The Vendetta Strike there from Nyx Assassin. He's now level 11 with an urn. And like I said, he actually did opt to max out the mana burn. It's a 5 multiplier uh, off of the intelligence. So let's check out how much intelligence Skyrath actually has. Uh, 59 at the moment. So as you can see, it's a lot of damage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But he should have more than that, I feel like. Is he level 11? He doesn't really have any intelligence items. Arcane Boots just boosts your mana. It doesn't give you base intelligence, so... Sitting at 59 for now. So it's like a, almost a 300 damage nuke there. As the Roshan will be attempted here. Uh, actually, easily done here with the Alacrity. And of course, the presence of the Dark Lord. Minus 6 armor coming out from Shadowfiend. They take down the Rosh at about 45 seconds. Um... Of the 29th minute, 29 minutes, 45 seconds, uh, and maybe look to push the mid lane. Ice gonna head back to heal right now. Um, he's got phase boots, dust bottle, and tanking up there with the bracer. If we head over to Outshine, we saw I picked up the butterfly and the one to scoop up the agency of the immortal Nyx assassin. Meanwhile, he's got an urn, dust, and mana boots, so not a whole lot on him. He's vendetted up now once again, looking for prey. Not gonna find any. 
Uh, everyone being very cautious here in the mid lane. Rakuto just lined up to shoot those Illuminates. Keep the creep wave off the tower. Teramis, though, he is heading bot. Let's see. We'll be found out by Super Dry. Can't Super Dry burst him. He's got 16, almost 1700 HP, 22 armor, and a Manta. Going for that heart next, as I did suspect. Pretty much the common Fire thing to do there. As Ice, though, still wants to be on the prowl. Uh, there, Super Dry. Going to run out of the Vendetta. But it's off in 20 seconds because he is level 11. He's the one actually TPing back and dealing with the Jiggy Fresh push. I think maybe instead of pressuring this, they could possibly farm and Nyx and Bounty Hunter need to team up and uh, definitely just try to get Jiggy Fresh down. Bait his TP out into the lane. Should be easy. Same thing goes for the Tinker. You can find him as well. And uh, buy a gem maybe and continue to try to shut down Terramis here as he's doppel walked up. Probably wants to go back to farming here pretty soon. I hear a TP. No, I hear a relocate. I think it was actually on a Terramis. He gets caught out here. The dust will be thrown. He can purge himself here, though, but the cooldown is not available. He throws the purge to get rid of the slow and break the invis, maybe. But here comes the Shirkin. Looks like Jiggy Fresh will take out Pillipants' Visage, but Terramis drops as well. And Visage, where did he go down? Right here on that crossroads there. I like to call it the T between, uh, in the Radiant Jungle there. I call it the T, so whatever. Probably not the most common term for it, I don't really know. Looked a lot more like a T on the Dota 1 minimap, if I recall correctly. Outshine, gonna be going for that Satanic next, has the Helm of Iron Will, ready to build that in into the Helm of Dominator, of course, and then after that, uh, gonna be opting to go for the Satanic as Nyx Assassin tries to get a pick off, doing what he should be doing. Bounty Hunter not with him at the moment, he really just wants to pick off these people TPing into the lanes, but, uh... I think it's a little too weak to do it, to be honest. As we see him go down, of course, he did run into both Tinker as well as Nature's Prophet. Here comes Jester, though, with an Invis rune. We're going to have to run through this minefield, take a bit of damage there. And now he's looking for Jiggy Fresh, who does pop his Necrobook level 1. And opt in to go for the Necrobook uh, for the push here. The Tornado goes out, the Meteor to follow as well, all onto Jiggy Fresh. No Deathening Blast, which does disarm, by the way, making it very, very strong. Uh, meanwhile, Outshine continues to farm. Jiggy Fresh will pick up Book 2 of that necro book leveling it up so not opting to go for a desolator uh, or an mj for helping out the push the desolator better for for taking out towers of course uh the mj the mjolnir will be pushing creep waves extremely flat fast with the chain lightning procs and of course necronomicon great for pushing as well the aura from the creep uh, you can leave them in the lane. They do give a bit of gold, but you don't really have to worry about them later on in the game that much. Just put them at the tower, keep them in the wave, uh, can push two lanes at once. So just really looking to keep the lanes pushed out with the Necronomicon pickup. Somewhat common, but definitely not the most common. Ice still looking to get something done right now. He's 1, 9, and 2 on this bounty hunter. He has not been able to get any traction this game uh, on that hero. He's got a couple track kills off for the team, but they're down 4 kills now. The gold is even, maybe a result of the tracks, but we can see they didn't have a lead. It's starting to disappear now as Terramis is uh, hitting a stride, starting to farm really fast. Same thing goes for Tinker as well as Nature's Prophet. The XP going to be uh, in... Nexus's favor at about 5,000 now was approaching 8 a little earlier on, but maybe a couple kills going the way of the Dire as the game kind of slowing down. You do expect maybe a bit of a slower game when you get three heroes that can make games oh so boring. The PL, the Nature's Prophet. I'm yawning now. The Tinker, the Coddle, pretty much all of them except for Skywrath. He's pretty fun to watch. Tinker can be as well, uh, when he really gets involved, uses the micro, the sheep sticks, ools, blink dagger, eth blade, dagon, like so much micro uh, involved for that hero. If you take that build, and Kaiu's working towards it here, he's got the sheep stick now, boots of travel, soul ring, and the blink dagger. As Super Dry, once again, looking for kills. I don't understand why ice doesn't go with him, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I really wish they would. <laughs> oh, wow, Murray is good. I actually did get the T from him, so shout out to FMBP Daisy. Uh, for teaching me how to play Dota and getting me into the game so many years ago. I didn't know if you'd pick up on that, or if you'd watch. 15 though, to 11. 
advantage nexus gaming by four kills looking to push out the top lane here comes rare ice but where's nick's assassin they're not together they're invis heroes that can gank and roam do insane burst damage and they're not teaming up for some reason they can't kill anyone by themselves they don't want to get together it's kind of upsetting me, uh, but we'll let them play their own game here as Outshine in the mid lane will go down. Aegis to pop. It was about to run out anyways. Can they group up and fight off of this? It does not look to be the case. He gets sheeped up, and that's going to immediately counter any evasion that the butterfly gives you. They throw out the dust as well. Pillow pants to fall. Rakuto's Illuminate hits on three. Jester as well as Outshine quite low. Jiggy Fresh coming in will hit Jester. He's actually able to four staff out of that. Three seconds onto the blink. Jiggy Fresh will have to give up. And let's see, we've got Super Dry coming over behind this once again by himself. Not with the Bounty Hunter. There's not a whole lot of team fight here, team fight control. Generally, you want a Dream Coil, a Vacuum, or a Jakiro here for the Shadow Fiend to buy you some time. All they've really got is Impale, and I suppose Invoker offers a lot of team fight control, but not without more points into Wex. He needs better Tornadoes, Deafening Blasts, um, Meteors, and yeah, pretty much Tornado and Deafening Blast. Those are really the two team fight control spells. And Ice Wall. I don't think I've seen him use Ice Wall. Uh, there hasn't really been any big engagements, but that spell pretty ridiculous if you ice wall four or five of course or you know maybe two or three more realistically and then shadow fiend channels right on top of them those raises are gonna hurt as the blade mails come out ice picks it up tries to be cheeky actually dies anyways but he does actually get caillou so mission accomplished sort of as now outshine looking to fight here mystic flare gonna whiff teramis could be in trouble super dry needs to impale i'm not sure why he didn't maybe some silence there by the ancient seal but fallen will go down make it 17 to 3 the four kill advantage remains for Nexus, so the trade did go even, but it looks like Caillou here with a buyback. Um, able to get back in, but not really able to commit on anything. There's no gem, I believe, on either side. Nexus probably opting not to buy one, as the Necro 3 is available for Jiggy Fresh, and in case you don't know, it does give True Sight, so able to reveal uh, that Bounty Hunter, that Nyx Assassin, the Ghost Walk, or no Shadow Blade on on the shadow demon but uh would reveal that as well obviously it reveals in viz pillow pants now going for that mech still doesn't have it here at 37 minutes into the game if we go and check out coddle he's got a mech as well as the four staff rolling so coming along nicely uh we got a sheep stick manta heart up on teramis on the pl necro book three getting the push done uh butterfly black king bar helm of the dominator working towards the satanic is outshine here on the shadow fiend pillow pants close to the mech as i mentioned super dry pretty much nothing uh urn magic stick and some boots and yeah not a whole lot else and i like ice is going for that blade mail here it will actually drop maybe jiggy fresh let's see here comes the rocket in it's gonna land caillou picks it up and Jiggy Fresh not able to run away there from the Necro Book. Or excuse me, Ice not able to run away from Jiggy Fresh, who has a Necro Book 3. Will go down. Tinker's Rockets actually clean it up. Must I repeat myself? Graph of gold still at even. And the XP, wow, starting to come back down as well towards Equilibrium. So still a very close game, but because it's close, uh, I think the lineup that Nexus has uh, still puts them pretty far ahead at this point. Uh, there's just not a lot of team fight here for the Dire, which is what they really needed. Strong lanes and decent team fight. So I think OD, although probably banned, would have been a solid choice here for the mid lane to dominate it. And then, of course, carry out big team fight with the Sanity's Eclipse. And then top lane, Shadow Fiend is actually okay. Uh, or even Puck in that mid lane, but neither of them going to be the case. But let's see. Here comes Jester throwing out the damages. Terramus has a heart. Doesn't take a whole lot. Fallen almost goes down there on the Sky Wrath. It looks like they will be able to get out of there just fine. The rockets continue to fly, and now Ice pops up. Um, the Blade Mail takes a ton of damage, though. Won't be getting Caillou this time, as he's already just sitting back in base. And now the PL Illusions. Wow, there's so many. They're going to work. There is the first Ice Wall of the game. Very good spell. Jester takes the Lance to the face, getting pretty low. And Terramus tracked up. Just wants to get the tower right now. Ice will go down. Make Invoker. Jester falls. Outshine trying to fight Terramus. Can't really get anything done. Ultimate goes off. Doesn't even do anything. And let's see. Jiggy Fresh will escape. The Sunstrike does not land right now. As the Spirit Lances keep going. The Mana Leak as well to stun. Mystic Flare a little off the mark there. Um, but either way. Not really going to be needed. They don't die. They get some kills. They force another buyback. And Terramus here last hits that tier 2 tower. Desolator now. A more standard item for Nature's Prophet. Picked up here at the 40 minute mark. Looking to push. 4, 2, and 11. As he immediately goes bottom to grab this wave. And uh, push out into the tier 3. Checking on the Roche timer. Roche. 
He's alive right now, ready to be killed again for the second time. Uh, we'll see if anyone decides to do it. Rukudo almost goes down, will go down from the cold snap damage there on top of the meteor. Uh, very nice. Let's see, blinking over back into the sheep after the rearm. Caillou, no stranger to the tinker. He actually did impress me a long time ago in the Sivo Season 1, I want to say, ages ago. Although I actually listened to one of my casts from back then. It wasn't too bad, actually. Although my computer at the time and how I was recording them was terrible. Top are under now we're much more upgraded here. 60 FPS stream. Could probably up the bitrate, but I want people to actually be able to watch. Need partnership uh, so that I can actually change the resolutions of my stream. Or you guys will have that option. And the only way I can do that is if you follow. So make sure to follow twitch.tv slash fmbpdota and to watch. I think it's uh, getting 400 viewers, you know, continuously for a couple times when you're streaming, uh, maybe weekly or so to get partnership. So maybe not too far off, actually, if I can get into some higher profile matches or Sivo Season 3 main, it might do the trick as well. We'll just have to wait and see. But here, oh my gosh, are they doing it? Maybe. Ice and Dry, Super Dry are together, but Ice wasn't even in Viz. Will go down. Jiggy Fresh now dominating. Cyclone, uh, Caillou, maybe that was his own old scepter as Jiggy Fresh might pay the price here. Will actually go down. Uh, can they counter push this though? Jiggy Fresh though gets a double kill. Wrath of Nature actually goes out and picks up the Nyx Assassin. And now Outshine gonna take the fall. This is everyone dying. This is bad. He goes down, drops the gem as well. Could be the GG, a buyback forced here from the Shadow Fiend. As Nexus looks to just be pushing the bottom lane with full force. The only one not here is Tinker and, of course, Nature's Prophet. But uh, they can easily get here. TP coming in, that's going to be Caillou. The tier 2 drops. The last outer tower is down. They've already got one tier 3 here. As the blink forward, Sheep up onto Outshine. Mana Link as well. Jester, though, goes in with the save, throws out. The Meteor Tornado combo now on cooldown, Deafening Blast invoked after that, taking a lot of damage from the March on the Machines and the Rocket. Um, surprise no more points in EMP, I mean in Wax. EMP could have been pretty good this game, uh, maybe, like if Tinker's got no mana he can't TP back. Uh, they actually will just go ahead and call the GG here in Game 1. Once again this was a best of 3 between Rare Candy and Nexus Gaming. This is Sivo Season 3 Placement Matches. And I'm Helium from FMBP Dota. I'll be bringing you Game 2 shortly.